morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney. And I am Zach and we have a great show for you today. It's going to be focused all on outerwear. So we're going to talk about some of the trends, show you how to decorate outerwear, and then we'll also show you how to sell into a number of different markets that can benefit greatly from outerwear. So with that said, let's head to the table and get started. All right. So in preparation for this particular uh, episode of the Stalls TV Morning Show, Courtney did a lot of research on outerwear, and I feel like it's become one of her passions is researching outerwear, understanding outerwear, maybe wearing outerwear. We might be able to talk her into it later. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. But let's talk a little bit. We ran a poll uh, before the show opened, and it looks like most of you are decorating outerwear already. But let's talk kind of uh, about why people are doing it and then why some people don't or why some people don't decorate certain items. So why is outerwear such a big uh, profit potential for a decorating business? You know, I think when we think of outerwear, we're automatically thinking about just heavy three-in-one jackets or insulated jackets, but the outerwear category is so large with mm -hmm. performance wear, quarter zips, hoodies, um, and I'm, I can rattle names off as far as blazers, cardigans, anything really that goes on over a jacket or over a t-shirt or something can be considered outerwear. So the opportunity is huge. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of high margins because a jacket, which now <laughs> may have sold for, let's say, $80, um, allows you to have a profit potential usually of 40 or $50 per yeah. jacket versus a t-shirt where you might only be making five or ten dollars. So there's a huge um, need for decorators to want to print these and bring them into their product line because it's a huge profit margin. Okay, so same amount of work to decorate a t-shirt as it is to decorate a jacket, right. we're saying, or decorate outerwear, but you can make a lot more money off of it. But on the flip side of that, it presents a lot more risk as well, because if you're selling a piece of outerwear for eighty dollars, it's going to cost you forty. What happens if you print something wrong? Right. So if on you there. mess up one, yeah. you're out forty dollars instead of being out two dollars. So there's right. obviously a lot of risk, which is why I think decorators stay away from it. Mm -hmm. um, not only because the price per piece is so high if you ruin one, but the margin for error as you start to move to more fabric types is a little higher too. So mm -hmm. um, whenever I go to print these types of jackets, I think about fabric construction. They're no longer just cotton t-shirts. Now we have polyesters. Um, and that includes moisture wicking fabrics too, as okay. the trends are starting to change. Mm -hmm. Nylon is a huge thing, and then one reason that decorators um, have a lot of challenges with these is the waterproofing that's yeah. on these. Yeah, absolutely. So there was a study that was published by um, ASI that you used uh, for a lot of the research that right. we have. But one of the most interesting numbers that I thought from the study was that 75% of the folks who use outerwear, which is probably most of our viewers right. if they live in any type of, of cool climate. But most people use it for function and not necessarily for fashion. So that could be, um, well, one, that's why we have the waterproofing, the water resistant, right. why some of the decoration is difficult. But I also don't see a lot of jackets or outerwear personalized or branded. What, what have you been seeing? I see a mixture, so when it comes to promotional products, there's a huge opportunity for um, promotional product companies to decorate these, mm -hmm. which of course adds the logos and the branding to them. Um, but I think really it sells well into any kind of corporate situation. So when we look at promotional products, um, a study done by ASI as far as the recall rate and the rate at which a promotional item um, it has a high recall that the person who receives it will remember that brand. Mm. When it came to jackets, ASI reported that 85% of people have a high recall or high perceived value of that jacket. So I think there's a lot of opportunity for decorators to print mm -hmm. um, for that specific area of the market. And then anytime you're selling to companies, there's a lot of opportunities, and we'll talk about that in trends for selling to these organizations or these groups. Um, and logoing them for that. Okay, so you um, mentioned the, the high recall rate, which we said was uh, people will remember your brand if you're putting it on this outerwear. So maybe that's a good tip for some of our decorators that want their business right. um, to be remembered. But what about some of the trends? Because when I think of outerwear, like I said, I, I'm the 75% guy that's thinking of function and not necessarily the fashion of it. So maybe you could enlighten us a little bit on the, yeah, the so trends. The, the trend of outerwear is really starting to evolve as, as everything is in the apparel industry towards performance wear towards athleisure. So we're starting to see, um, and I'll switch over to my computer to show a couple of trends and things that we're seeing specifically. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to um, this marketplace, this garment here, which is an OGO uh, quarter zip performance, is a prime example of what we're seeing with outerwear changing. It's performance wear, so it's um, moisture wicking, it's cool, 
it has a ton of ventilation areas, and it has a lot of reflective striping. So if you're selling to um, companies, for example, this is a good uh, option to offer them for their sales or their service people. And any time that you're selling um, corporate apparel, you should offer two looks. This would be a good option for your sales and service people, where of course you're going to want uh, more of a premium, high quality image to the customers. And then your second option would be more of a workwear um, garment, which is where we're seeing a lot of these styles, like on the Alpha Broder site. Um, and, and a ton of different decorators have these garments that are uh, more of a canvas, more of a heavy duty workwear jacket. And that's what you're probably going to be giving to more your worksmen, your craftsmen, or your delivery um, people, maybe for these um, types of companies. One other trend I really like that's gotten popular for if you're decorating for the female market, and I think it's uh -huh. really interesting, is these um, micro fleece jackets that are kind of like a blazer. So again, this is where we're seeing athleisure enter the outerwear market with fleece, with performance wear fabrics, and just changing everything we've ever thought about performance wear and these types of markets. Okay, so for my benefit on that particular jacket that we're looking at on screen right now, where um, would you recommend a decorator put something to keep within the fashionable look that we're seeing? I mean, with these types of jackets, there's so many areas to print. Obviously, a left chest print is still an interesting spot that you could logo um, with that zip-up jacket because it zips up further as well to create a different look. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of opportunity for shoulder prints. Um, on, on the back shoulder, I see opportunities for sleeves. Um, hemlines, so just getting creative with the print locations. This jacket is meant to be asymmetrical. You can see that the way the zipper, the girl's actually wearing it correctly. Mm -hmm. So I think getting unique with your print locations is key too. Yeah, I also see um, the price tag on this one of, <laughs> of $88. So it's kind of backing up what we're saying that outerwear gives us a lot of profit potential. So that price there is that our cost as a decorator, or is that what we should be selling? That's that the recommended for? selling price. Okay, so I would imagine our cost is going to be somewhere between maybe twenty, thirty, perhaps forty dollars, right? Um, lower than that particular price. So, again, same amount of work to decorate a left chest on that piece of outerwear as yeah. it is to put the Stalls TV logo here on my shirt. This shirt's going to sell for twenty, twenty-five dollars, and right. that jacket's going to sell for eighty-eight plus. So, a lot more profit, same amount of work uh, in outerwear. Right. Actually. Um, I noticed in the studio earlier, or actually late last week, some garments came in uh, of outerwear, some new trends. Did you want to take yeah, some time we'll to show those, those to show us? Yeah, we'll them off to the sure. audience. I can be your uh, model and hold those for you. Great. Right. Yeah, so in prepping for this, um, as well as some other Stalls TV classes, we grabbed in some of the um, latest styles that we're seeing in outerwear. And this is going to show a good example as to what we mean when we say performance wear athleisure is starting to move into the outerwear market. Um, so this jacket is one from Sanmar and their Sport Tech line, but one interesting thing about this that makes it real fashionable is the neckline actually zips up. So this is a trend we're seeing a lot in fitness apparel and running apparel, and of course that always translates over eventually into more mainstream markets like corporate um, apparel for small businesses and other companies. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed about this garment specifically, as well as some of the others that I'll show, it's performance wear. Yeah. So when we talk about decorating these types of jackets, there's some challenges with performance wear. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's moisture wicking. It has a tendency to scorch under high heat. Mm -hmm. So you want to look for heat transfers that are low temperature. You want to try to stay away from embroidery, which is a really popular uh, method for printing outerwear. Yeah. But with this, it just doesn't complement embroidery well because of the thin, soft stretchiness of this poly spandex mix. Yeah, it seems like you might get, if you put direct embroidery on here, that it would pucker because it is a, that's, that one in particular is a very thin fabric. Right, absolutely. So we'll move on to our next style and one that I find really popular. Um, and this is if you followed fall trends at all so far this year, you've seen a ton of this new color blocking. So I feel like it's everywhere. Performance wear, jackets, t-shirts. I mean, everything is doing this mm -hmm. mixture of solids, um, whether it's a heathered gray um, neutral shade like this mixed with a neon or a bright shade. But color blocking is huge. And this is just another example of a performance wear jacket that's, that's taking those trends and bringing them into outerwear. So again, 100% polyester. The last garment that we looked at, I was peeking at the tags as, as I was trying to prep uh, for today's show. The last garment that we looked at was a 90-10. It was 90 polyester and 10% spandex. So you're going to have some stretch there, of course, because it's a ladies right. fit. It was meant to be more of a tight fit. That one in particular is my favorite. So if anybody is going to try and sell me a jacket, <laughs> choose this one with the color blocking. All yeah, right. and this is another opportunity where we're saying, you know, you can always print these bottom areas here if you're worried about not getting a good print area. Mm -hmm. So unique locations at the hemline. Take that one from 
Okay. And as we talk more about unique print locations, I moved to the sh uh, soft shell jacket, which these styles are always going to be popular. The main thing about these that we're seeing mixing performance we're in is just the um, the fleece lining that mm -hmm. we're seeing in a lot of these jackets, which can sometimes make them difficult to print. Um, they have usually a tendency to um, be heat sensitive, just like all those performance fabrics, so keep that in mind if you're printing these. But I like to um, mix my print locations, whether that's a print down the sleeve, this left chest logo I have here, or I can even print it with a, a shoulder print, which is really great for understated branding for corporate companies mm -hmm. um, or promotional products. Absolutely. And then my final favorite, I actually showed um, in a live class for the eight fall trends. And this was actually the, the most popular look that we had completely shown. It's a really um, kind of a medium weight jacket. It has a heathered finish to it. It's striping. So this is, again, another trend we're seeing in apparel, yeah. moving into outerwear. So it's heathered. It's striped. It's got that gradient finish to it. And then this actually has a metallic logo on it. So as we're starting to look at what we're printing on these jackets, being able to add those bling finishes and metallics and understated um, logos like this is huge. And this is just another heat transfer and a metallic finish. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing this uh, performance fabric all the way from compression gear, which is kind of where right. it started underneath everything. And it has made its way all the way out two, three layers to outerwear. So if you haven't figured out how to decorate performance wear, now's the time to figure it out. Because no matter which supplier you go to, which um, were all these garments from the same place? Yes, Different they places. were actually all from Sanmar. So as you're looking to source jackets like these, Sanmar obviously has a robust line. Companies like Independent Trading Company, um, Game Sportswear, Alpha Broder, all of them have, again, a mixture of these types of jackets, the outerwear, the reflectives that we showed mm -hmm. on the screen, and then these types of styles of performance wear too. Okay, so Josh isn't with us in the studio today, but he took some time, actually some time ago, uh, to show us how to decorate jackets. So we're going to show you part of a video series on how to print jackets from Josh. If you want to find more parts of the series, you can visit us at stallstv.com. Hi, I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls TV, and I'm going to teach you how to heat print jackets today. Here we have a Sport Tech jacket by Port Authority, and I want to walk through some of the challenges with decorating jackets in general. Um, number one is finding a material that adheres properly. Most jackets are either poly or nylon based, so you want to make sure you select a heat transfer material that's designed to adhere uh, to the fabric that the garment's constructed of. Um, but once you get that part right, it's all about how do I load this on my heat press and limit the risk. Um, so when you're dealing with any jacket, you want to unzip it and take a look at what's inside. And in this case, if we wanted to print a right chest graphic, we see that there is a seam structure here on the inside that's really going to make it impossible uh, to heat print that without risking some print through or, or um, getting a, a little bit of a marking here on the jacket from this printing through because there's no way for me to split these layers apart. This is all sewn together. So I'd want to steer away from a right chest placement on this particular jacket. Now if I look at a left chest placement, the construction of this jacket, um, Sanmar has made it a little easier uh, because they have what's called a port pocket, which is typically for uh, clean hooping uh, for embroidery, but it also helps in our heat transfer world uh, where we can simply unzip that and we can split these layers to get a nice flat pressing area. Now of course that means you have to be able to uh, put something inside of here to raise this print area um, so this isn't going to print through so the zipper won't print through. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. Slide in a heat printing pillow or a print perfect pad. Or since I have the Hotronics heat press, I'm going to show you how to do it with an um, interchangeable uh, lower platen. So I swap out my 16 by 20 attachment. Drop in my 6 by 10 inch, which will allow me to open up the pocket and thread it on draping over the zipper, creating a completely flat heat printing area. Now, of course, you want to be aware of the um, orientation of the jacket and the way you lay out your graphic. Um, there's also a 7-inch round platen um, that works well for this application, or you can get any custom platen you desire. So once I have it loaded appropriately, preheat. And make sure during the preheat process you dial in your pressure. Get you a nice flat heat pressing area. 
void of moisture and wrinkles. Position the design and print. And I have a completed application that's perfectly flat uh, without print through. Now just to show you the, the other way um, to do that, I'm going to heat print the same thing. Uh, not the actual graphic, but lock the heat press down on the other side of the jacket to show you the, the risk and what you need to watch out for. So if I'm going to load this on, and I can see there's the seam right here. Even if I raise it up, there's no way to get away from the seam. Lock it down and you start to see it strike through uh, your design and you get a little discoloration along the jacket. Now, of course, that's for left chest and, and right chest graphics. Now, the other thing you're going to want to probably heat print on a lot of jackets is a back placement. Um, so this jacket's pretty nice in that it has all the uh, mesh outside of the main print area. So once again, you'll want to be careful with just how you load this onto your heat press, trying to make sure any of those seams are outside of the print area. An 11 by 15 attachment may be a better fit for this to completely eliminate the mesh. Now all that extra mesh, if I'm to peek inside of here, is hanging down over the edge. You can see there's where the original line was. It's well off of my heat printing area. And then of course graphic placement. Um, we've given you tips like this in the past where there's a hood. You want to make sure you line them up a little bit lower. And happy heat printing on this garment. Let's show you one more jacket. It's a little different. Here we've printed a left chest graphic. You can see this is also made possible by this pocket that will allow you to split it and thread it on, getting it down to a single layer, getting rid of the mesh. Um, but unfortunately, there's mesh fully on the back of this jacket. So it's something that I'd want to take caution if heat printing, um, if there's no pocket to thread it to get it to a single layer. That's the whole goal here. But in this case, there is a pocket. Get it to a single layer, split it onto the platen and thread it on, getting for a completely flat, even heat printing area. So once again, make sure you have the proper material with the right adhesive for your jacket fabric and try to eliminate any obstructions such as zipper, mesh, and seam structure to get a single ply layer for heat printing. Make sure you use heat printing pillows, print perfect pads, or a threadable heat press with optional platens such as the Stahls Hotronics line of heat presses. And this is Make It Your Market. Thanks, Josh. And the Make It Your Market segment of the morning show, it's that area where we talk about lucrative sales opportunities and how you can take them and make them your own. So with that, we're going to look at product selection, how to find customers, and how to get into the market of municipalities. Municipalities specifically are government organizations that are local, that um, are traditionally police departments, fire departments, and different local organizations, even sometimes construction workers, that present an opportunity for decorators to print and sell to. Now when you're selling into any market, it's good to limit the choices that you're offering to the buyer. I like to present a good, better, best strategy and limit my choices to three or even four items that I want to sell into that market, depending on what they're looking for. When I look at my good option, I want to look at a value option. In this market, buyers always buy on value, so they're looking for something that's inexpensive because they're on a budget, as are all of your customers and all of your clients. But a 100% cotton t-shirt or a basic 50-50 t-shirt 
gives me that opportunity to offer them something that's good, but presents that value that I want to deliver to them. My better option is still going to be one that provides value, but it's going to be a polyester, moisture wicking, more premium garment. I can choose this in a short sleeve like I've done here, or a long sleeve option um, as I start to transition into different seasons for these markets. Now when I look at this as a better option, I want to consider who I'm sourcing my performance wear or my moisture wicking garment from. I don't want to source from um, an, a very expensive moisture wicking fabric, so I don't want an OGO or a Nike or an Under Armour. I will still want something that's value and allows me to deliver a low cost and still make a lot of money on the sale. So this is specifically a um, private brand sport tech garment from Sanmar, which then allows me to offer that low price point that I need to provide value to them at my better option. Next, we're going to look at what I consider the best option. So that's going to be your premium garment. So that's where, of course, outerwear mentions and comes into play. So we just talked a lot about outerwear and how you can sell into different markets with this premium um, item. So that's, of course, going to be your very best item. And when you go to selling these different types of um, jackets or t-shirts, a lot of these buyers buy on convenience. So when you're looking at convenience and how you're selling to them, remember to make it convenient for them to purchase everything they need. So they may need a t-shirt for their summer season. They may need a lightweight jacket or a heavyweight jacket for the fall and winter. And depending on the market you're selling to, they may even need a vest that's packaged together. So package together all of the items and sell them together in a valuable price point that will help to reach this market. Once we have our product and our items selected for what we're specifically going to sell, the second thing I do is I present a same better best um, option to um, the decoration technique that's on these garments. So when I consider that, my good option is going to maybe be my basic print. So my screen print, my heat transfer, and maybe a black, white, or a basic shade. My better option is going to be a reflective. So safety workwear um, and different safety reflective elements is huge into this marketplace. And if you can present that to your customers, it offers a better or even a best solution by offering that additional um, safety need to them and that ANSI certification. Now when I say ANSI certification, a lot of reflective um, inks, heat transfers, or even applique materials have a um, ANSI certification, which means they are um, approved to wear on these types of garments. And as you start to sell um, into a lot of these organizations, they're required to have a certain amount of reflective on their garments to be able to be close to a road where, or a, um, a roadside or something like that. So keep that in mind as you're looking to sell into these markets. And of course you can do that by either using a reflective heat transfer or reflective ink, or selecting a garment that actually has the reflective striping that is ANSI certified to give you what you need to sell into these markets. My best option is to take that reflective and to mix it up into a premium applique look mixed with direct embroidery. And of course, embroidery and applique always have a higher perceived value. So as I present this to my customers, remember that this would be my best solution. I can now offer you a reflective applique that gives you a high quality premium look. And this is just a 3M reflective heat transfer material um, installs rip away applique. So as we start to move outside of the product selection and the decoration, and now I know what I want to sell, I have my pricing and my packages where I want it to be, it's time to find your customers. That's always the third step and a very crucial one in being able to sell into new markets. So when it comes to looking for these types of businesses, where do I look? As with any market, I recommend looking at Google Maps or Yellow Pages for the local municipalities that are in your area. You want to expand your um, search range to say 60, 90, or even 120 miles outside of your radius because of course if you're limiting to you know, the 15 mile radius of your area, you're going to be very limited in your sales opportunities. So if you have these packages, feel free to go out and sell to different groups. Once you have that selected, there's different ways to find these types of um, decorators as well. So another thing would be to, um, and as you're looking on Google Maps, keep in mind you're not just looking for police departments and fire departments. There's opportunity with construction workers, um, with anybody who's really within 10 feet of a road crew. So that continues um, to be workers in federal highway areas or different road crews. That's another opportunity, as well as, of course, the fire departments, which need more than um, just your basic fire um, garment. So you're not just printing t-shirts, but remember, we're giving them um, everything they need so they don't have to look anywhere for another decorator or another supplier. So package together anything they need for their uniforms, which is traditionally a flame resistant um, type of outerwear. And that works in a lot of different workwear industries too as you're selling into these markets. 
Aside from that, you can get um, information online about federal contractors from companies like Lockheed and Martin. You can also um, contact small business consultants for large corporations and see what goods and what they're looking for and how you can get in to bid on their next job when they're ready to purchase more uniforms and more, jer uh, more jackets and t-shirts and things like that. So once you have um, your list created from all of these sources, your products, your de decoration, everything ready to go, it's time to go out and make sales calls and start to make this your market. So enjoy this type of market and going out after them and making sales calls. This has been Make It Your Market. Thanks for watching. Right, thanks, Courtney. Great information. I know um, in my experience it's been difficult to kind of supplant the folks who are already doing the decorations for these right. municipalities. It's all kind of, um, I don't want to say it's all, but most of it is relationship driven. So it makes sense to maybe join your local chamber of commerce, start making relationships in the township. One other thing that I know you can do to find these folks outside of uh, Google and Yellow Pages, mm -hmm. most states publish a list of the largest employers in each county. So you right. can kind of uh, just use Google to, to find out the largest employers in your county. Nine times out of ten, a lot of these organizations are going to show up on there. Mm -hmm. All right, so we thank you for joining us for this uh, edition of the Stalls TV Morning Show, and we'll be back with you again live next week, Monday morning at 11 a.m. I'm Zach. I'm Courtney. Thanks for watching. <laughs>